In March 1838, near the end of the Second Seminole War, a force of Tennessee volunteers led by Major William Lauderdale established one of three forts along the New River. Years later, those forts and the city that would thrive along the New River would bear Major Lauderdale's name. This is the history of Fort Lauderdale. In 1892, 50 years after the end of the War with the Seminoles, a group of businessmen from Palm Beach began construction of the first road running from Lantana to Lemon City. The New River intersected this road, so in 1893, Frank Stranahan arrived to operate the ferry across the New River. An overnight stagecoach stop was established and soon evolved into a camp where travelers, businessmen, and Seminoles would meet to trade and purchase goods. Following the big freeze of 1895, Henry Flagler offered Philemon Nathaniel Bryan the opportunity to construct a portion of his Florida East Coast Railroad. Bryan and two of his eldest sons, Reed and Thomas, moved from New Smyrna to Fort Lauderdale. With the help of 400 workers, they completed the project, and on February 22, 1896, the first steam engine arrived in Fort Lauderdale. The railroad would spur the growth of the area as an agricultural and commercial center. In August of 1900, Frank Stranahan married Fort Lauderdale's first school teacher, Ivy Cromarty. They then began construction of their new home, which was built by Edwin T. King, the area's first contractor. The Stranahans opened their home to the community, operating it as a trading post, post office, and community center. In 1911, with a year-round population firmly established, the city of Fort Lauderdale was incorporated. William H. Marshall, one of the area's most successful produce growers, was elected the city's first mayor. By 1915, Frank Stranahan, the Oliver brothers, and many other entrepreneurs had established permanent places of business in the growing downtown. At the same time, across the New River, Ed King established a boatyard. Here, under the direction of Reed Bryan, they built dredges that cut the North and South New River canals, which provided a direct link from the farms located around Lake Okeechobee to the Fort Lauderdale Railhead, and thus established the city's importance as a winter vegetable market. Throughout the 1920s, the concept of the Venice of America started to form. Developers like Charlie Rhodes and the Stillwell brothers began clearing the mangrove swamps off Los Olas Boulevard. In a few short years, the Venice Isles and Idlewild would become synonymous with Fort Lauderdale. Aided by newly constructed luxury hotels like the Hotel Broward, Fort Lauderdale experienced increased interest and investment during the early 1920s. A real estate boom in 1925 boosted the city's population exponentially in just a few short months. One of these investors was Joseph Young. In the early 20s, Young purchased land around Lake Mabel and began construction of Port Everglades. His intention was to drive the area's economy beyond just agriculture and tourism. But in September of 1926, tragedy struck. A major hurricane hit Fort Lauderdale, killing 243 people and causing more than $1.5 billion worth of damage in today's dollars. The 1926 hurricane drove Fort Lauderdale's economy into depression, nearly four years before the Great Depression. One economic bright spot during the Depression was Port Everglades. Construction continued after the hurricane and the port officially opened in 1928. Recovery was slow during the 1930s, but Fort Lauderdale's population continued to grow, reaching nearly 18,000 by the end of the decade. In the late 30s and early 40s, Europe became embroiled in war, so Fort Lauderdale's city leaders began relaying messages to Washington, touting the city's established port and airfields and their usefulness as military installations. Washington listened, and Merrill Fogg Field was quickly converted into a naval air station. Likewise, Port Everglades was utilized by the Navy, becoming the site of a U.S. Navy section base. After the war, the Naval Air Station became Broward County International Airport, which would later be known as Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport. Post-war Fort Lauderdale experienced a population boom not seen since the early 1920s. The influx of people led developers to build homes, 
shopping centers, and other commercial developments outside the city center. Iconic developments such as the Gateway Shopping Center, Sears Town, and Sunrise Shopping Center began springing up throughout the city. Developers also began building hotels on Fort Lauderdale's beaches, something they hoped would attract tourism dollars for the city. And attract tourists they did. Although people have been visiting Fort Lauderdale since the 1920s, the idea of Fort Lauderdale as a spring break destination was not fully realized until 1960, when the film Where the Boys Are sparked a craze. The film's instant success led to the descent of thousands of college students onto Fort Lauderdale's beaches and established the city's reputation for fun in the sun. During the 1950s, Fort Lauderdale began making concerted efforts to bring cultural venues and opportunities to the city's downtown. Over the years, venues like the Museum of Art, Parker Playhouse, the Museum of Discovery and Science, Riverwalk, the Fort Lauderdale History Center, and the Broward Center for the Performing Arts all opened their doors to the public. The city's interest in cultural development downtown and along the Riverwalk attracted many businesses and investors to Fort Lauderdale. Today, Fort Lauderdale is a major yachting center and a major tourist destination, welcoming more than 10 million visitors each year. And many prominent companies call downtown Fort Lauderdale home, including AutoNation, Citrix Systems, Styles, Spirit Airlines, and City Furniture. We also have major educational institutions, such as Nova Southeastern University, Broward College, Florida Atlantic University, and Kaiser University. Since its incorporation in 1911, the city of Fort Lauderdale, through the efforts of its pioneers and entrepreneurs, has risen from its start as a minor trading post on the New River to the prosperous city you all know today.